Okay, welcome to Chicago City HQ. This is the City Morning Show. This morning, I have the pleasure to be sitting down with Coach Ryan and Coach Baza. How are you doing, boys? Doing well. Hey, good morning. Baza, where are you at? Nice little scenery behind you. This is a shot of Gurok from Lyle Hill in Greenock, Scotland. So where nice. are you from? We'll start with you then. So give us an intro on yourself. Barry Cummings uh, from Scotland, been in the US for about 22 years now. Uh, still based in Kansas City right now, looking to get up to Chicago here, hopefully pretty shortly. Um, I have a three-year-old son, Lennon, and a two-year-old girl, Lauren. And uh, been with a club about two or three months. Yeah, new addition, new addition, awesome. Another Scottish on staff, keeping Craig happy, keeping him honest. He loves it. He's and a big Celtic fan. Love it. Coach Roy, tell us a bit about you. Um, Ryan Rogak, 31 years old, um, born and raised in Chicago, uh, actually over in Rogers Park. Um, so I've been in Chicago my whole life, went to Loyal Academy, Loyal University. Um, at home here, it's just my wife and our dog. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, Ryan's our local boy. Again, nice to have him in and, and always giving us the, be able to give us the good landscape of uh, Chicago. Right, right, we'll stick with you. So just give, give us a background. How did you get into soccer? Um, so I think I was in second grade. Um, one of my friend's dads was coaching an AYSO team and needed to fill out the roster. And I pretty much had been playing almost every sport when I was a kid. Um, and so... You know, we just figured, why not put some shin guards on me and throw a pair of boots on? And it, I just, I loved it right away. Um, I think my first game, I scored seven goals. Um, so I had another parent come over to my mom and ask me if I wanted to try travel soccer. Um, and so I got into my first team, uh, FC Royale in Evanston. They are unfortunately no longer around, but um, actually kind of cool. Um the guy who started the club used to play in the youth squad for FC Bayern Munich. So we actually got to meet them in, I want to say, the early 2000s when the team came in. They went over to a local shop, uh, soccer shop, so we got to actually meet the team then. Um, I still, like, it, when I was a kid, I, I had no idea who I was actually meeting. So being an American kind of outside and not getting broadcast it was kind of like I I didn't know who these guys were so um yeah so played for FC Royal for a while went on to play high school for Loyola Academy kind of burnt out of the sport um leading up to my senior year of high school um for various reasons and then I didn't get back into playing until my junior year of college um at Loyola University didn't make the first team there um kind of one thing that I kind of wish I had a fire under my butt earlier because um, it seems like it would have been a really good opportunity to play at a higher level in college. Um, still playing today. Uh, I help a few parent leagues out. Um, I got my Sunday travel team um, and then playing indoor stuff like that. So, you know, once, once in second grade, I, I kind of got hooked to it. Um, I was kind of the weird kid who was playing soccer back then. Um, I know most of you guys grew up where, it was the biggest thing. So um, I was the only kid in my school that was really playing. So, so that's interesting. So at that time, so I mean, what year was that where soccer, you know, like we see the, the involvement of it today, what year was that when it was maybe not as popular? I mean, it, this was probably right after the 94 World Cup when you saw a big boost in kids just kind of joining their local programs. Um, and I'd say with that big boost, you kind of had some kids who are athletic like myself who kind of took quickly to the sport and then that kind of helped expand I feel like the travel programs in the area. So you've you've got to really see you know, how the game has evolved just in Chicago especially huh? Yeah I mean growing up the big thing was don't kick it with your toe. Um, a kid did a pullback <laughs> and the parents went wild. Um, I remember my first time seeing I was, it was the second year I was playing travel and a kid did a rainbow flick mid game. And I, I just stopped in the middle of the pitch. Like he was full speed running at the defender ball kind of trailed behind him. He flicked it over. So I'm just like, 
what did I just join? Like, I couldn't believe that. I thought you had hands for feet at that point. So, yeah, yeah it's, there's been a big development, especially in the U.S., but Chicago, I know there's a lot of good programs in the area. So, oh, that's great. That's great to hear. Baz, what about yourself? How did you get into playing? Oh, many millenniums ago, Nick, it feels <laughs> like. Um, I got into playing. Uh, my dad was a uh, ex-professional player. And um, so he kicked it around with me and my brother a lot. And then we joined the local club, which was Port Glasgow Boys Club, when we were about eight or nine. But that was kind of young back then, even for getting into competitive. Um, and back then, um, it was 11 v 11 at nine years old, eight, you know, 10 years old. I'm sure you might have been the same. Um, yeah. So um, a little bit crazy trying to get a corner kick in from a full-size field when you're nine. And, uh, you know, playing with a size five ball. And so, um, you know, just had to kind of learn the hard way. But um, played uh, with a lot of youth clubs, obviously, in uh, the West Coast. Eventually moved up to Glasgow when I was about 16. Celtic uh, recruited me to join their pro youth. I uh, played from 16 to 18 with them. Uh, had to f never really got a chance to get into the, the big team. I just... It wasn't good enough, really, but there was a lot of great players on our team that did eventually go into the first team. Some went on to play for Scotland as well. And then um, had some, you know, years trials and um, played junior for a while, which is what you would call semi-pro with quite a few clubs before I came to the States. I came over to the States when I was 25 in 1998. And um, got into, like, the... Uh, college soccer by chance really um just on tryouts and walk-ons so um that got me into baker university and um played there and that kind of springboarded things into coaching as well and what, what college were you with Baza? at baker university in kansas uh small town um just outside kansas city um NEIA. Yeah, yeah. What position were you? I was a forward. It was really fast, Nick, believe it or not. Like the wind. <laughs> you could catch me. How was the goal? Um, I think I was on about a goal or two a game and about a yellow card a game. It seemed to, seemed to work. That, that's what they said anyway. Love Good it. stats. Yeah. Who was, who was the most or who became the most famous player that you might have played with? Or even again, uh, here in Scotland in the youth system. Um, well, Neil McCann um, was on one of my first teams. Neil um, went uh, professional and played for Dundee, Hearts and Rangers, which are all Premier League Scottish teams. He, he ended up playing, I think he got a few games for Scotland as well. He's actually a TV pundit now. He does the uh, soccer show on a Saturday night. So he's on sports scene. So Neil uh, did well. um, some of the guys at Celtic, Bra uh, Brian McGock, Lachlan went into the first team and um, so did Barry Smith, Stuart Gray. I don't know if you remember, his dad was Eddie Gray. Um, he played for Leeds, famous Leeds team. And Frank Gray was his uncle. So Stuart went in. So we had quite a few guys go into the first team and get some games, but I'd say only a few managed to stay longer because it's such a good level. It's For a young player to break through, it's not easy. Um, some of them got some games and moved on to other clubs, you know. Um, but um, great experience to go in and play. Uh, the year I joined them, Scotland actually were in the U16 World Cup. Um, they got the final, I don't know if you remember that. It would be in about 1990. It's the last time I had anybody who was any good. <laughs> um, but um, the cool thing is most of them guys on that team were on the team I joined the next year. So... From watching them on TV to going in and playing with them was a big change for me. Uh, uh, you know, cool, but also like, wow, I'm going to step my game up here to get a game. So um, back then they were playing me center mid. So um, I was a little more athletic player than I was in America, I would say. <laughs> Love it. And for those that maybe don't know, obviously Craig on staff is a Rangers fan. And now we have Baza, who's a Celtic fan. So... The old firm has become a little bit more interesting. 
Yeah, it's a pity that the old Rangers are in the first division these days, you know. <laughs> They've really dropped off. <laughs> Love it. Right, right. So we move on. So from playing then, you know, how did you get into coaching? Where did that all start for you? And kind of how did you end up at Chicago City? Um, so my coaching story kind of began when I started playing post-college. Um, I actually randomly went on, um, you know, Craigslist looking for a team to play because I was just dying to get back in, play a bit more once, once you know, college ended. So yeah. I ended up joining a random team um that same year actually Stuart and Connor mentioned him last time Stuart Barlow actually was on that team that um, shout out? <laughs> yeah shout out for Stuart um so we actually joined the same season um he ended up being you know a few miles away from my place so I dropped him off um because he was just fresh to Chicago from I believe the west coast um so me and him started kind of talking a bit he was working with UKI and they needed a coach to do some part-time work. Um, so I just said, yeah, I'll jump in. Um, started doing a local AYSO and then summer camps over that summer. Worked for another year about doing AYSO um, and then got a very good opportunity through him again, um, working for Man City. Um, so uh, that one was hard because I'm a huge Manchester United fan. Um, but you know, the program was, the program was well intended and, um, really enjoyed the work there. So I was working with city and the community, um, for Manchester city, and it was just a local community program where kids could go for free soccer, uh, after school in Logan, uh, Logan square. Um, so, you know, kind of was directing that for about three years. Um, and then actually that's when I first met Unic. Um, was when I was running that program there. Um, I actually remember the one day you came by, uh, you were kind of hanging out along the fence. And um, I remember I had a kid acting up and I was just kind of like, God, oh, just this isn't the right day for you to be kind of doing that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's when I first met you. Um, started doing part-time stuff um, with our former coach, Jose, uh, Saturday mornings. Uh, we actually did a basketball practice one morning randomly too. Um, so multi-sport is always good. Um, so yeah, then I started working part-time with city about five years ago. Um, and then, yeah, got offered a full-time position and, you know, really have enjoyed every day since joining. Yeah. And I remember, again, I love these memories when we talked about with the coaches and kind of we all first meet, but I remember that first time and I mean, you could tell, talk in more detail, but the thing that took me back to kind of, I guess I was like impressed and what of what I saw was your the code of conduct. Just talk a little bit about how you did that with that program because I thought that was very unique. It was needed, and I think you executed it really, really well. Okay, uh, so yeah, that um, it was a community program. Again, we we didn't really filter out anyone unless if we hit capacity of you know having sixty kids in one day at a session. Um, so it was me and another coach, we each would take about 30. So having that many kids can be troublesome, especially when, you know, you have a mixed bag of attitudes and behaviors. You got some kids that are very much wanting to work. And then as a free program goes, you get some people who kind of bring their kids because there's nothing else for them to do. Um, so with that, we had to kind of create a way where they had more ownership over their behavior um, and how can we kind of get them, you know, to listen to themselves. So we've made a code of conduct and we do this at the beginning of every season with each team we had. And very simply, we would have them kind of create their own rules for how they would behave at practice. Um, so again, every year would be different. We'd get some silly ones. Um, and then we'd get, you know, more serious ones because once you make the kids kind of think about it, they, they know how they should act. Yeah. Um, and again, you give them the ownership over that. In the long run, they understand, you know, this isn't a rule that coach set. This is a rule I said I would follow. Um, and you have them all sign it. And very simply, I feel like, you know, just starting off on that foot kind of set that program off every season in the right way where kids knew how to behave, especially in that large group setting, so. 
Yeah, and that, that's and that's what was highlighted to me. It was like, okay, this is this is a great fit for the model that we have at Chicago City, and I know we've implemented it across the board as well. So it's been really good. And uh, Basil, what about yourself? How did you get into coaching? After your um, long career. Um, in my illustrious career, um, I got into coaching by chance. Really, um, I was playing uh, with a bunch of British guys indoor. Um, you know, they were all coaching in a club called KCFC. Um, it's a very good club. Back in the early 2000s in Kansas City, they had a lot of strong team state, winning teams on the boys and girls. And um, I did, I, I kind of got to know the guys, and then I did some camps with them. Um, so I did some local camps, and then um, I got invited to go. Like one of my end up good friends had one called Whip. Welsh soccer camps and we'd go to Colorado every year and I uh, coached for him and it was a great uh, kind of trip really because it was uh, Colorado Springs, Cheyenne Mountain, if you've ever been out there, it's all around the Rockies, Canyon City, beautiful place. Yeah. So we coached there for two weeks, me and some of the other guys, British guys, and um, they kind of said, you know, you should maybe get into the club and try and coach some uh, team, so they did um, get me in, and I started with the really young teams, which is a good thing. Well, I think it's a great way to start off when you're going into the get going back into coaching is totally different. So I was given the U9 girls, U10 girls for the first few years, and I was lucky I had a lot of athletic kids, so they did well. Um, and um, that was kind of my learning, and then obviously from Getting into that, I realized that maybe I need to go learn more about how to coach. So I started my coaching education. I did a lot of NSCAA courses, um, which was my pathway into the USSF. And, um, yeah, that's kind of how I got into it. And, um, obviously, over the years, I kept trying to go to a course every year or two and up my licenses to the point where I met you in 2010 on the A license in Lake it's at Lake Forest, Chicago. Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, that's how I ended up there. But it took me a good probably eight years of going all over. We just got to Florida. I've been to, um, went to Denver one year just to do all the courses. They try and just keep going up the ladder. And, you know, luckily enough, I, I, they must have thought it was good enough to get through the B into the A because it's a lot of people drop off. But um, that's where I met you, Nick, and got to know you. And, I remember nutmegging you a few times in the games, and that's friends. <laughs> um, I'll, let you, I'll let you tell your story. He likes to tell the story, Ryan. The moment we really clicked and became best friends. <laughs> 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 and I loved, loved Barry from the halfway line, and of course, which is, wasn't well respected. But <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, we got, we got talking obviously during that course and working together on our projects and things like that, and, and kept in touch since. and this opportunity has come and, you know, I know we connected six to eight months ago, maybe. Yeah. From Scotland and just, just talk us through, obviously, kind of decision making and coming on, coming on board. And obviously, get here as soon as you can. <laughs> yeah, obviously, uh, with the, the coronavirus stuff, things got put on the back burner. But um, we, uh, you know, we've talked over the years. I lived in Chicago 2015. Um, I have a lot of sales experience as well as coaching experience. So I was working for Sprint. And, um, you know, you were telling me a lot about what you did with the club and obviously following up for our conversations. For a license, I just loved what you were doing with, like, you wanted a team of coaches that were a true team. You also wanted, um, you were really focused on developing talent and developing the individual player and having a good model where the kids are truly, um, you know, moved around depending on where they belong. And um, I just, I really like the sound of that because I've, I'm not going to knock some of the clubs I'm in, but sometimes you I've been in some clubs where you're you're just really wearing the jersey, you're you're kind of giving your teams, and it's up to you what you want to do. There wasn't any kind of great structure, and probably until the latter years of my coach. In the last few years, I think clubs have got a lot more structured. They have you know in place some sort of technical director that's helping the coaches make sure they're being relevant with what they teach. And, um, you know, you already had all that going. You were already, you know, um, I think you were ahead of the game a little bit back then. And some co 
clubs that I see here now are really getting on that stuff and catching up. So um, I just, I liked, I liked your philosophies, you know, obviously I, I, I agreed with them. So we had a lot to talk about. Um, and um, the reason we got into coaching in the first place is I wanted, well, me personally, is I wanted to give back to the game that gave me so many great experiences in my life. And I miss all those guys that I played with and I, you miss them teams that you played on. And, um, you know, if I, if I could help a little kid out, get better at soccer and go on and enjoy those things in their life and give them something to really, you know, look forward to every week at play. Then I thought that's what we should do really, if we can, if, you know, and um, it's been a great uh, journey and I'm, you know, obviously excited to come on board with you guys and come up there and, you know, start coaching in Chicago will be the next chapter. So I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> Yeah, we are too. I think that you touched on it there. I think that's a common thing within our staff, especially the ones that maybe played longer than others, but I think everyone has played at a certain level. But it's that feeling of just giving back to the game that gave so much. Because even for ourselves, especially being from overseas, you, you come over because of this game, because of this sport, and, it, and it's, it's got us to where we are. And, you know, we've had a good life through it. And like you say, I think that's, you get to a point where like, how do I give this back and how do I give it back in the right manner? And I love that. So, Roy, obviously, Baza hasn't, you know, we kind of touched on it, but for you, like, what's, what touches base or touches home with you that, you know, working at Chicago City in this environment? We ask the coaches each week, kind of like, what, what does it mean to you or what do you like about it? Um, I mean, it means a lot to me because I know, like, especially being here for about, you know, five years, we have a really good group of coaches you know we really are concerned about each other on and off the field um I mean like myself I had some personal stuff coming up and I had some really nice messages from coaches offering to help out whatever can be done um so I mean being part of the staff like it, it was always very welcoming right from the fr like start from when I came um but I, sorry I forgot the second part of that no I think that, that's Especially, I think, when you come in as well, being one of the younger ones, you know, I see it from our staff and obviously myself. It's like we, we take you under your wing and it's it's pushing you and challenging you, but also, like you said, supporting you. And I think I've seen the major growth in every one of you, and especially yourself, you know, when it's sometimes being the only American in the room and you got to represent and you and you do that pretty well. But um, I, I was going to say kind of, you know, it has been really good to have, you know, like yourself, Slavo and Craig especially I kind of right from the start kind of looked up to you guys as being you know mentors um working with you at the WPSL last year um that was a great opportunity to me just kind of seeing the level and intensity you have when you're on the field coaching because um when I first kind of started helping out um you and I would kind of run the run the pre-academy for a while yeah, yeah. Um, so usually I'd be running a session next to you and I'd always kind of hear snidbits and like that's why I kind of like you know working with coaches in a kind of closer space because I kind of hear the way that they're talking to players the way they kind of are setting things up and I always kind of take little bits of that but like especially getting that early on was getting like some really good mentors um Paige and I came in the first year together Paige had more experience than me with um you know travel soccer I was running practices next to him two days a week so like I would pick his brain all the time um you know getting to learn from him I'd see you know guys that are kind of closer to my age like Connor and maybe Stu I don't know um I think he's a bit older <laughs> um, but like again like it there's different dynamics and relationships but I think at the end of the day, like we all are kind of on the same level wise where we don't have any issues kind of giving feedback to another coach. Um, yeah. Cause we all know it comes from a good place. It's not, I'm trying to knock Barry or Nick for something you did. It's more of, Hey, I see something that you might not have thought of. Um, yeah. I see something that might be a little different. Have you thought about that? Um, so like the environment and everything not only has it been supportive, but it's been also very good for, you know, my personal development as a coach and as a person. So, yeah, I mean, and, and to kind of big you up, I mean, you're always willing to listen and learn and ask questions and ask difficult questions sometimes that, you know, challenge us as well, which is always great. And I think that's something that, 
you should be proud of. I think that's why you're excelling and that's why you're getting better. And, you know, Valentin last year was, was a great experience, you know, um, working with that level of players as well and seeing those practices in those games. So, yeah, good on you. Right, so we'll, we'll wrap it up. Um, with the last kind of comments on, you know, what do you think the future looks like in Chicago, the region, and, and nationally for the U.S.? Like, in general, what do you think soccer, where is it going? Basil, we'll go with you first. Um, <clears throat> I think it's on the way up, for sure. Um, I think you're starting to see those athletes that have went to football, baseball, basketball, starting to go to soccer, which when I first came over, that was never happening. 20-odd years ago, those kids would never go to soccer. Like Ryan was talking about, it was kind of, you know, different. Now, <clears throat> it's a big deal. The EPL's on TV. A lot of, um, you know, American kids are following EPL teams. They've got favorite teams. That wasn't there. Um, the MLS is strong. Like, I know can speak from locally, case, Sport and KC, they sell out just about every game. And I know um, that's had a huge impact in this area because all the kids wear the jerseys, they like the players, they're into playing. Um, so I see um, the U.S. really progressing. I wouldn't be surprised if they can get a really late run in the World Cup here in the next 10 years. I've been close a couple of times. Um, um, as for Scotland, I don't know. We might see them next century. Uh, <laughs> get, they might get it right eventually. But I think a lot comes from a lot of great uh, coaches being here that have been implanted. And also, and I've, I always stick up for, uh, I've had some fantastic American coaches as mentors. I've met a lot of great American coaches, and a lot of people don't give those guys enough respect. They've developed the game too. It's not only the international coaches. And um, I do see the game progressing. And, you know, I, I'm looking forward to seeing how Chicago holds up. We've Obviously, over the years, I've played some teams up there. I know it's a good level. But I'm, I'm interested to see, like, you know, getting the bigger picture, seeing how all the clubs are firsthand, getting to see them every week. I'm looking forward to I think I'll enjoy that. And, um, you know, there's some great kids up there and, I think um, it's only a matter of time for the U.S. really gets – if they can get the right coach in, at the helm, I think it's only a matter of time for they get really into the later stages. But um, we'll see. Good, good, good. Ryan, what about yourself? I like the optimism uh, for the U.S. Um, you know, especially growing through, again, soccer from my early age of, you know, don't kick it with your toe and, you know, kind of – Razzle Dazzle was a pullback. So, I mean, it's come leaps and bounds. Um, I think some of the biggest things that have helped out is, you know, we're getting better coaches and it's through our coaching education. It's through also the opportunities for a lot of, you know, your guys came here for college. Um, I know other people who came here to coach. Um, so I think that the mixture of, you know, getting some European coaches, some South American coaches from all over the world starting to come to the U.S. to coach is helping, but us getting down our education system has been one of the biggest things. Um, I know it was kind of a laughing stock when people used to kind of show up and you'd get your, you know, certificates at one point. That's why I heard at least. Um, <laughs> and now it's, I mean, I remember on my C course, like I'm still trying to get on my B. It's been a lot of application process and everything. And they're trying to take, you know, people that are at certain qualifications and everything. And I understand that, but I remember on my C, I saw some guys on there and they were struggling. And I mean, it's good to see that there's a good standard for, you know, who's on the field working with your kid. I think that's one of the biggest things. So we're seeing, you know, from our coaches becoming better, we're seeing better players. And again, you know, Barry mentioned the streams now of English Premier League, Bundesliga, you can almost watch any league on TV now or on the internet. So I think that's definitely helping because when I was a kid, you would see three games over a weekend. They would usually be on at like 12 o'clock at night. So you'd either see a Chelsea, you'd see an Arsenal, or you'd see a Man United. And I mean, that's how ultimately I became a Man United fan. But like, you'd have to watch it an odd hour or you'd have to record it on VHS. So, um, but I'm, I'm up, I'm 
you know, looking forward to what the U.S. does, especially I wasn't a big fan of Bruce Arena coming back. Um, was still a little upset about Klinsman leaving because I feel he gave, a, gave us the best challenge for our education um, and giving us, you know, new opportunities and pathways within it. So, again, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing younger players for the U.S. coming out, which is always great to see. Um, and we're getting a lot more skilled athletes that are playing, you know, international competitions more frequently, like a you know, Christian Pulisic. Yeah. So hopefully someone like him can motivate kids to work and say, hey, he did it. I can get there too. And we'll have a strong, you know, presence in the world with the U.S. team. So women's yeah. team, that's not too many issues there. Yeah. No, I love that. And I think I'm, I'm most interested based off – the times we're in right now and, and thinking back about like how we grew up playing on the streets and always with a ball and majority of kids now throughout the US have been forced to do that and they're at home with a ball and obviously it depends on how much hours they're putting in a day but it'll be interesting to see how many kids come out of this will they be technically more creative more gifted more you know fundamentally you know solid um, and it, it could it could elevate the game to another level but I mean, we'll see Why? Right, well any last thoughts guys no. All good. Yep. Ready to get back on the field. Yeah, ready. Yep. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time this morning. Sorry for the technical difficulties with Facebook, guys. That our viewers. Um, hope you enjoy this. And again, you can send them any questions once we post this, and we'll try to answer them. Thanks, Barry. Thanks, Ryan. Have a great day. Thanks, Thanks guys. Bye, Barry.